<laughs> All right, welcome listeners. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Unsecurity Podcast. This is episode 134, and the date is May. No, crap, it's jo- June. I know. All right, it's June 2nd. June 1st was the day after Memorial Day. So today is June 2nd. We didn't do it yesterday. But anyway, you heard his, uh, you heard his voice. Joining me is my good friend, Brad Nye. Hi, Brad. Hey, Evan. I, uh, here we are back at work. Yeah, I'm excited. I actually, today is my f- day 14 after the second shot. So I, I'm clear after today, or at least feel nice. to be clear. So I'm going to actually go into the office tomorrow. It's going to be weird. That is going to be weird. You know, uh, Ryan texted me yesterday. Speaking of like diseases and things, he said yesterday, uh, he forwarded me something from NPR News. Don't kiss your chickens. The CDC says in a salmonella warning, in case you were wondering. So I, I have not been kissing my chickens. I tend to not do that anyway. I hope, I'm not sure why. Okay. It's a news thing. So some, somebody somewhere must be kissing their chickens and getting sick. I mean, good advice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I've been spending time, uh, you know, on Twitter and social media, just kind of, you know, checking out things and man, just the lack of like sense, like where is your logic in any of your things that you post? Yeah. yeah there's a, a lack of critical thinking. Right. And if you spend too much time, I'm sorry, you know, I realize that if you spend too much time on social media, I think it makes you dumber. I, I mean, honestly, I you you've seen yeah. my, my activity. I have a kind of accounts and just don't really do anything with them. Right. Well, we're taking a break from uh, a guest again this week. So we had you know I think five six some guests. We had Roger Grimes on four twenty. That's hard hard to believe. It's already April. Uh, Ron Werner was on 427. John Strand on episode 130 on 5.4. We had Chris Roberts on episode 131 on 511. We had last week, we had Gabe Friedlander from Wiser on episode 133. Today, it's me and you. Yeah. Yeah, it was funny with uh, Gabe. We actually had, uh, I had added one of our customers asking for exactly what they were doing i'm right. like hey <laughs> guess what right when well, gabe mentioned on our show too that he was uh grateful for all the i guess bigger players that they abandoned the small to mid-sized market so that he can play there and yeah. you know, he's created a great solution there but yeah yeah i mean it was they were they were asking for exactly what he's doing i was like well that's convenient exactly well i've got six now i had five i figured today what we do is we talk about some news articles we talk about some things that i picked out over the last week that you know were i think worthy of discussion with you and then uh big things going on oh yeah every all every day man every day but then i also found another one last night somebody forwarded to me i get people forward news to me from weird places and want to know you know hey what's your opinion on this so yesterday from merit talk We'll add a sixth news thing. Uh, DOD completes CMMC review. Senator says significant changes are coming, which is sort of interesting. So that's uh, coming from Senator Manchin uh, out of West yeah. Virginia. So that thing hasn't even been like fully rolled out. And now they're talking about making some significant changes. And I think one of the, we'll start with this news article. So again, it's, at, it's merittalk.com. M-E-R-I-T-A-L-K dot com. DOD completes CMC, CMMC review, uh, and the senator says significant changes are coming. So for people that don't know what CMMC is, it's the Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification. It's issued out of the Department of Defense. And essentially, you have to meet these security requirements, be certified by a third party that you met these security requirements before you can do business with the Department of Defense. 
Yeah. Right? That sort of sums it up. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, you went through the training and you are, uh, what, uh, CMMC certified, what do you call yourself? Registered practitioner. So, Registered practitioner. So you're one of the people that can help people actually get to the certification. Correct. Okay. Whereas the other ones are the assessors and they can't really help you get there. They can just assess you. Uh, right? Well, they can help, but they can't help and assess. You can only do one of those two pieces. Got it. You can either help someone get there or you can assess where they're at, but you can't do okay. both. So this is a big deal and you know it's uh i kind of like the way they were going about it you know they put this thing out for uh review you know comment and review and you know a couple of times before they finalized it and then built uh kind of a structure you know yep. to do it and then uh, and they're not rushing into it right they're sort of taking oh, their time there's only 15 contracts this year that'll have any sort of CMMC requirement. And I just sent you another one uh, that, because I hadn't seen this, I'm not sure how I missed it, but it looks like, because uh, when you said that, when you said that over, I was like, what? How are they gonna, what changes are they gonna make? One through three, like level one is just not even all the fundamentals that we look at. Um, but it looks like they're going to focus on levels four and five, which I think is, there were a couple of things that I'm going, how are they going to do this? Who's going to be level four and five? It's going to have to be your Lockheed's and Boeing's and, yeah, you know, the big ones, because they, they have requirements for, uh, you know, a, a SOC 24-7 C-13 and all kinds of stuff. And there's there's no way that, unless you're a big company, you're going to have that stuff. But right. the number, you know, of level fours and fives are probably going to be, you know, it's just going to be a small fraction, but we'll see what, this will be interesting to see what happens. Well, and Senator Manchin is, is quoted in, in the, in this article and it says CMMC is intended to be financially self-sustaining mm -hmm. with companies paying for their assessments and certifications and those companies then recouping compliance costs as part of their cost estimates to the Department of Defense. And then he goes on to say that industrial-based companies, especially smaller contractors, are very concerned about the cost involved in regular on-site assessments. See, I, I mean, yeah, the com yeah, complexity of complying with cybersecurity practices that companies have difficulty understanding. Look, there's like 17 controls for level one. Yeah, man, I'm not. Yeah, but you know, yeah, I don't know. And it's like, are you going to take this seriously or not? Because when you start to compromise, when you start to mm -hmm. deviate, what is, you know, deviate from what is good practice, you know, I mean, what are the consequences? Yeah, I mean, level three, which is the first one that requires. Uh, for CUI, for that, what is it, uh, uh, class, what is it, shoot, confidential and classified information. Yeah. It's like, you know, limit information systems access to authorized users, provide privacy and security notices, limit use of portable storage devices. I mean, well, it's probably not the practices themselves that are, you know, maybe costly for these smaller companies. It's engaging with an assessor. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, and that's the thing we haven't seen is what that is actually going to be. Because technically, there's no official assessors at this point. They're all pending their own certification. So how are they? I, I haven't been able to find anybody who's been willing or can tell us what the cost of an assessment is going to be right you know we know that for us to help people it's going to be anywhere from like 3500 or so for a level one because it is really really just the, the basics mm -hmm. up to you know 12 to 15 for a level three where there you have a significant amount of requirements and right i mean I, yeah i don't know I'm with you. Well, like, don't compromise. No, and it'll be interesting to see 
but there's also a lot of money grabbers too. So if some of these smaller companies have been talking to, you know, some of the assessors and, and the assessors are charging them really large fees, you know, that's not good either. Right. So this, I think as soon as you saw CMMC, and this happens all the time in our industry, as soon as something new comes out, there's this big, huge rush by everybody in this industry to go out and do this because it's a big money grab, right? I, mm -hmm. I'm going to make a ton of money, open up a whole, whole new line of business. Yeah. When, you know, you kind of miss the point of the reason why we're doing it, right? Well, it's, it's the fundamentals like we keep talking about. I mean, yeah, level four and five for sure are definitely much going to be very much more difficult to get but again you're looking at companies that should be doing that stuff anyway because of what they have access to yeah if you're making a billion dollar plane that you're selling to the federal government you can probably afford some of those controls right i mean again you're probably looking at you know the boeings the lockheeds the Honeywell's the big, I mean, General Electric, right? Yeah, yep. I mean, big, big companies because, yeah, they get, they have some subcontractors that they, you know, that this this manufacturing company makes this part and this other one makes this part. Well, they're going to be level three, right? right. So th those changes are going to be smaller. And then you can do it, you know, you're looking at farmers and Others that have contract information, they're, they're going to be level one. And we've already, they've already said critical infrastructure, which is agriculture. So if they're not doing the basics and they can have their entire, you know, system shut down and, and well, that'll be another one of the articles we kind of, we talk about, but it, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, when I was talking to somebody yesterday, because they wanted to know, you know, that summary that I wrote about the executive order, mm -hmm. they wanted to know, you know, about it. So I sent it to them. And then we started talking about, you know, why so much in such a short period of time. And really, it's because you got so far behind, right? Oh, yeah. The, the ball keeps getting further and further from you. Technology continues to go faster than your ability to secure it. And you didn't do those fundamentals at the beginning. So now it seems like it's so much work. Whereas if you've been doing it right from the beginning, it wouldn't have been much work. Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah. And so now you're at this point where it's like, oh my God, do I want to bite this off? Well, here's the truth. It only gets harder. The well, longer you wait, the harder it gets. So the ball continues to get further from you. Well, and here's the other thing. What is this saying about these companies that are going, oh, we can't do this when they are technically should have been doing DFARS, you know, an 800-171 for how many years? And they're self-certifying and now they're going, oh, well, we can't have somebody come on site. Um, Again, it might be the cost though of having somebody coming on yeah. site, you know, who knows? But it'll be interesting to see what comes out of it. You know, I, we'll be keeping an eye on it. Uh, that was news that was just released, I think yesterday. So we'll see. So the other five articles I have, uh, one is, and I'll let you choose which one you want to talk about next. FBI will share compromised passwords with HIBP pwned passwords, which is, you know, have I been pwned? That's one. Another one is beware. Walmart phishing attack says your package was not delivered. You know how we like our packages, so that will probably catch some people, I assume. Yeah. The big news this week, FBI food giant, JBS Foods. And now this kind of pisses me off because I'm a meat guy, right? Cool. And so now their production has been shut down after a ransomware attack. To talk about the basics again. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one is Russian hacker group, Nobelium uh, attack. U.S. government attacks U.S. government agencies by targeting 3,000 email accounts. This is related to, not directly, but certainly indirectly related to the solar winds attack yeah it's the same group yeah and then u.s army tells remote workers to switch off their iot devices and then withdraws that advice <laughs> shut off your iot okay hold on don't i mean should we just go in order yeah let's do it right, so the first one is when i first saw this i was like okay and i, and I was grateful that 
it was uh, I, I found what I was looking for in this article because at first I was thinking, but have I been pwned is going to be getting compromised passwords. So the FBI is going to be sharing compromised passwords that they find during their investigations with have I been pwned or HIBP. Mm-hmm. My first thought was, okay, but are you going to share that with other people too? Or is it just going to be this exclusive sharing between the FBI and have I been pwned? Because that's not it's not the way the federal government is supposed to work, right? You don't show favoritism right. to the private sector. But then I saw, you know, in the article, so Troy Hunt, if you remember, Troy Hunt is the guy who started H, uh, you know, Have I Been Pwned? But he has since sold it, I believe. He's still involved, but I think somebody else owns it now. Uh, but he'll, he said that he'll be um, opening the source code. Yeah. So that, you know, and an API so that people can, you know, get those same passwords. So that's kind of neat. So the FBI, FBI, so this comes from, if you're looking for the article yourself, the listeners, uh, Security Affairs, and the title is FBI will share compromised passwords with HIBP pwned passwords, pwned being P-W-N-E-D. So, yeah. All right. It's kind of it's kind of newsworthy because I don't recall another place where this has happened before. No, it, yeah, yeah, a billion requests a month. <laughs> That's nuts. Yeah, yeah. The quote is: "Feeding these passwords into HIBP gives the FBI the opportunity to do this almost one billion times per month." It's good leverage. Leverage for what? Well, against uh, hopefully protecting people. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully. So they're going to provide passwords uh, as SHA-1 and NTLM hash pairs. Uh, yeah, so we'll see. It, it's yeah. something I, new like this is... I mean, it oh, makes. Man. I'm skeptical. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think, you know, opening the source code, and he announced that the source code thing like in August. Right. So that's, just, you know, it's not like it's, well, they're going to do this, so I have to do it. It, you know, it, that was already in the works, which makes me feel a little bit better. But I mean, Personally, I think it's a it'll be a positive, right? We know that the FBI is getting this stuff. Let's take advantage of this information that's out there and use a service that is and has been very good and make it better. So I'm I'm excited. I think and I like the fact that he's you know working on APIs to make it available and we can do integrations. That's gonna be as we, we talk about it for an industry that's quote data driven, we have crap data. Well, let's get better data out there. And this is a good way to start. No, I agree. And it, uh, yeah, I just look forward to the day when, you know, people will choose stronger passwords. I think that'll yeah. ever happen. I was, <laughs> I was reading a, uh, I'll have to find it. Uh, doing a vendor review for a customer, and uh, the they they have in there. I'm going to copy this into the chat for you, so you can chuckle at it. But they have a funny example of a passphrase in their policy, <laughs> and it's like you know, it's a good example or a good like definition. And it's like, for example, use the traffic on the 101 was expletives. This morning. Nice. Yeah. You know, but anyway, that, I did, that just reminded me of that. I wanted to tell you about that. But uh, yeah, I, it's a good start. Well, it is. And, and I don't know. And I'm not, I'm not against it by any means. I like when the federal government shares things with the private sector and, and actually vice versa. What I don't like is how people abuse it. You know, now I don't think have I been pwned is going to abuse it, but 
this does start to set a precedent. So you're going to see other companies that do abuse things like this approaching the federal government and saying, well, you do it with have I been pwned? Why don't you do it with us? Yeah, you know I, mean? but I think if they're opening the source code with, you know, the dot net, which is a 501c, it's a nonprofit. You know, there, there, that does take a little bit of that. I don't know. Nonprofits make a profit, man. <laughs> True. <laughs> but... I don't know. And I, yeah, I think this one instance, it's, it's, it's definitely good. You know, it, and it's sad that we're at this state of affairs with our industry that I think actually within our industry, there are more destructive forces than there are outside of our industry, meaning the attackers that come, that come from wherever they come from, mm -hmm. I think are sometimes not as bad as the people inside our industry who are taking advantage of other people. Oh, I, I mean, the difference is th when you come across as saying we're helping you and you're actually taking advantage, that's what is the problem. You know, yeah. obviously attackers are going to cause all kinds of problems. We've seen the, the financial estimates of what it costs for, you know, for these attacks. But I mean, you look at how much is spent on InfoSec on a, in a year. Is it? What in like a trillion or something like that, or right. how much of that is actually necessary? Well, exactly. And so yesterday, it's funny. I was writing an article um, about. So last week, the CSA or C CISA, not CSA, uh, actually Department of Homeland Security and the Transportation Security Administration (TSA) issued uh, issued a new directive. I don't know if you saw it last week. And in that directive, it was aimed at pipeline owners and operators, mm -hmm. critical pipeline owners and operators. And really the things that were, I think, three things really that were there. One was you need to report, you know, all suspected and confirmed cybersecurity incidents or events to the federal government, to CISA. Right? Yeah. All right. Seems legit. I don't know why it took us till now to figure out that that was a good idea but okay and the second thing is you need to you need to need to appoint um i can't remember the exact name but basically a cyber incident manager who's available 24 7 365 you know again legit and the third one which was sort of nebulous which i think is going to lead to some confusion unless there's additional direction is you need to do basically i think a risk assessment hmm. But, uh, you know, they're not clear about the scope. I mean, you've seen this happen so many times in our industry where oh, you yeah. have the letter of the law and the intent of the law. The intent might be great, but the letter is like, hmm, all kinds of wiggle room on this one. Yeah. Well, so I mean, in, in doing research for that article, I was like, I figured out 3,006 days. That's the number of days between when President Obama issued Executive Order 13636, which was what eventually led to the NIST CSF, critical infrastructure. Yep. And it's funny how when you read the quotes in there about why we're doing this, and then 3,006 days later, we've got this directive that comes out, and it's like nothing really changed, at least not enough. It's crazy how this is critical infrastructure too, mind you. It's not like oh yeah, well and, it's not like retail. I mean, this is critical infrastructure. And yeah, the, if, when you look at the colonial thing, that like a lot of it was they were they were like, uh, shut it down. We don't know what to do. Uh, what? Yeah, they shut down the pipeline because the billing system was impacted by the IT system being right. Down. And, and, and that's a pipeline. And you mentioned, you just mentioned, you know, earlier in this podcast about, you know, agriculture also being a yeah. critical infrastructure, which it is. And what kind of shape do you think that's in? Oh, it's not good. I can tell you that for a fact. I've right. <laughs> right. And then you, you read about, you know, like uh, it wasn't all that long ago when they had the water treatment facility attack, Oldsmar, Florida. 
Well, there have been multiple too. Yep. Exactly. So in this directive, this was from the president of the United States, essentially the CEO of the country. Yeah. Hey, do that. In 2013, issued this directive that said, hey, we have these intrusions into our critical infrastructure. We need to get our crap together. And where are we? And well, in the water one, you know, you've got, uh, was it the American Water? Uh, oh, shoot, hang on. It's AWWA. Mm-hmm. And it was for uh, there, it's the American Water Works Association, which helps with, uh, oh, shoot. There's a, it, there's an, a, there's a law that for, you know, anybody, any water, treatment facility that serves over 3,500 people has to do these things. And they, you know, the AWWA put it out a, uh, a free tool to do it, to like self-assess. And right. obviously that's not being used. Well, and so if you look for a common thread in all of this, what you have, I think, in my opinion, is a lack of accountability. Well, I mean, even the NISTCSF, right, when that came out, we're ta- again, I'm talking critical infrastructure, right? Look at the meaning of the word critical, and you made it, and you made it voluntary. Right, and then you try to make it, hey, we're going to do this with CMMC, you have to do this, and everybody freaks out. It's going to be too expensive, we can't do this. Um, I can tell you right now, it's a hell of a lot cheaper to do this now than deal with a ransomware attack. Right. And you know that where this leads, right? Use logic. And we opened up, you know, talking about social media now, it seems like there's a lack of logic. If you, lose, if you use logic, where does this lead, right? Eventually, it's either going to be a matter of survival of your organization, or you're going to be forced to do it, where eventually you're going to have to bite the bullet. Now or later, it gets harder the longer it goes. Yep. You know, and here we are, you know, 3006 days later and we're talking about the same crap we were talking about 3006 days ago yeah yeah and you know it's not just government right like if you're a company i'm working with somebody right now who had a huge contract suspended uh until they get socked too and to their credit they are they really did do want to do the right thing and and are you know, busting their butts, but they're, they're, this is like a six figure a month contract that is suspended until they get SOC 2. And it was a lot of, you know, hey, yeah, we're doing it, we're not documenting or, you know, it's not formalized for the majority of it. There were, there were some things they weren't doing, but, you know, they were doing a lot of good things, but if you don't do it right, you're, it's, it's painful. You know, well, that's another frustrating thing, too, is you'll have people say, we need to get a SOC 2. Like, that's some sort of rubber stamp that you're doing whoa, the right whoa. things to protect information, right? I know. They were, they were asking about it. <laughs> it's like, they're like, oh, do we have to do this, this, this? I'm like, no, no. Here's the thing with the SOC 2. You're going to tell them what they're, you're doing. They don't, they're not going to judge. Whether it's the right thing or whether not. Whether it's right or not. Yeah, they're going to look and say, Okay, you say you're doing X, Y, and Z. Show me you're doing X, Y, and Z. Is X, Y, and Z the right thing to do? Yeah. They don't care. They're just wanting, and they're like, oh, well, what? I've seen so many abuse. I've I've seen so many abuses of SOC 2. It's not even funny. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, SOC 2. And then then it's like, okay, well, did you read the SOC 2? No. No. Why would I do that? Right, because that's like the thing that you're okay. Forget it. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the next uh, <laughs> uh, article. It's um, this one is from Bleeping Computer, and the article title is "Beware: Walmart Phishing Attack Says Your Package Was Not Delivered." Hey, nobody messing with my packages, dog. Well, you know what's crazy is this isn't new by any means. Right. It's just now instead of it being Amazon, it's Walmart, right? Like we've seen that. I mean, I know I've used the Amazon phishing since at least 2017, not earlier in our training where it says, hey, 
your order of the XYZ TV for $500 is in stock and ready to ship, you'll be billed on this date. Click here if you have, you know, to view the, the order. It's, it's the same thing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. So in this one, it's uh, yeah, the same thing. It's uh, essentially the campaign pretends to be from Walmart. The subject line is your package delivery problem notification ID number. And then, you know, essentially, unfortunately, we were not able to deliver your postal package in time because your address is not correct. Please, please reply us, <laughs> please reply us with the correct fishing or shipping address. And then, you know, obviously you click on the update address button and then, yeah, type in your information and away you go. Yeah. So the same truth has always been the same truth in any, in any communication that you did not originate yourself, you know, be leery of it, right? Never click on a link in an email or text or anything else that takes you to a login page and then log in. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Now I will say I, I did find it unfortunate, but amusing. If you look at the related articles, there's one at Walmart apologize for offensive racist registration emails. And they said what looks like somebody did is they took a list of email addresses and created fraudulent accounts with racist usernames so there was like no sort of checks in place and so all these people got this offensive name saying hey you're registered which i mean come on but <laughs> it's kind of it is it is amusing that that not the the racist piece obviously but just that that was something that could be done Right. Like, do you not have checks? Why are you allowing thousands of user accounts to be created from the same IP? The basics, brother. <sighs> but again, I think it's a lot of it comes down to accountability, right? I mean, if you're not going to hold me accountable for it, I mean, it's, it's like raising kids. Yeah. Have any of these people raised kids before? Because, like, if you don't hold your kids accountable, they they become little hellions. Sometimes they still become little hellions. But yep. you hold them accountable. You know, why did you break your toy? You're not getting another toy. Right. Yeah. You had a temper tantrum, you broke it, and now you want a replacement? No. There are consequences. Right. Yeah. You hit your sister. You are now going to be punished. You know what I mean? It's just like fundamental things but then when it, when we apply it to when we're not, when we're adults maybe it's like oh another breach yeah all right move on yeah oh, yeah so this one the next one is also from bleeping computer and this one actually does torque me because i'm a big meat eater i love meat uh, and the, my cost of bacon is probably going to go up which does not make me happy i can try i guess i'll buy from a local butcher maybe save myself a little bit but this one is uh, from Bleepy Computer, food giant JBS Foods shuts down production after cyber attack. Yeah. And now I hate Russian, Russians. <laughs> not, not Russians, I hate the Russian government or these attackers. Well, I mean, yeah, it, that, that's such as they were walk such a fine line where they're not officially sponsoring them, so it's not state. But they, you know, they look the other way as long as they don't do anything to them, right? Like they're like, eh, do whatever. But if you mess with us, you're that's it. Right. And I wonder, like, I was thinking about this last night. You know, I wonder what kind of communications go on behind the scenes. You know, I mean, like if if I was the president of the United States and this happened, I'd be on the phone to. Well, Putin and saying like, "Hey, stop messing with our shit." Yeah. Well, and and they did confirm Russia's deputy foreign minister 
told local media Biden administration had been in contact with Moscow to discuss the attack. So that what, yeah, I'm with you. They're definitely reaching out to him. I would love to hear, or at least get like, hey, here's a summary of what was discussed. Because it goes back to the accountability. If you're not going to do something about it, then just what? I mean, you just continue to accept it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had the solar winds attack. We had, and these are just ones that, you know, ones top of mind that we heard about that came from foreign adversaries, you know, i.e. Russia. You know, you had the solar winds attack. That was a big, big deal. And then you had, you know, Colonial Pipeline. And I have JBS Foods. And then all the things in between, at what point do you put a stop to it and say, hey, stop messing around? Yeah. I mean, or do we, or do we not have the capabilities? I mean, there, I suppose there's that too. If we're like, crap, Russia would pretty much kick our ass online. So I don't, I mean, I think the, it goes back to what we were talking about with CMMC. It's these people, the companies haven't done anything. And now it's like, oh, hey, that's gonna you know, take down your business. Well, that's too much work. It hasn't happened to us yet. Well, and the thing that tip torts me too is like, okay, you took down the business, but like with the, with the pipeline and with this actually, I have no other alternative. Me as a consumer, as a citizen, I now pay more for gas because of your mistake. Well, yeah. And it's not just, cyber attacks too it's it's the business continuity planning disaster recovery look at what happened to texas when they had that you know mm -hmm. cold weather the prices here in minnesota went up i mean hello we've prepped for cold weather why are we paying more right your failure to plan is costing me more exactly and it's not like i won't i mean i will survive with you know, I don't have to drive as much as I do, and I don't need to eat as much meat as I do. But I mean, cool. this some people are in a position either to afford things like I can afford things, right? I get paid more than you know the base, you know, average pay in America. You know, I'm not living in poverty, right? But what about the people that are affected like that? The people who are in poverty, the people who do struggle to put yeah anything on their plate. Yeah what's this going to do to them right well and yeah it, it comes back to you know these companies that are using them what are their options that's the problem well and jps is like the world's largest i think right meat supplier who who where else can i go right that's that uh, you know it's going to take you know, they, they look here and they're saying that um, Swift, Pilgrim's Pride, Sierra, Moy Park, Primo, and, you know, 190 customers from 190 countries on six continents. Well, those customers should probably start, you know, they need to put some pressure on them. The problem is, like you said, they're, what, what is JBS going to say? Well, good luck. Go somewhere else. And That's what I'm saying, up, man. I mean, yeah. It, and that's the part that frustrates me so much because if your crappy business decisions, because you made poor choices, it, it goes back to the accountability thing too. I've always taught my kids, right? I'm talking like kids. Are these like kids? It's like you make poor choices. There are consequences for your poor choices. If you don't like it, then quit making poor choices. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think it's going to come down to at some point the government's going to have to step in and say, "Hey, you know," and start issuing fines or doing something because there. And that, it's not. And that's where I think you need to go, right? Because yeah, we're not stop going down the route of like creating another standard, creating more best practices. We got all the best practices I could regurgitate in a lifetime. What you need to do is start enforcing some of this crap, right? Yeah. Here is a here are the basic baseline security controls that every company in the United States must have in place by X date. Well, and, and going back to the first you know thing we were talking about, I think 
what we'll see is well I, what i thought we'll see what happens with the changes but i think cmmc will become adopted across the entire u.s government i wouldn't be surprised in any way especially when you start seeing this type of thing yeah maybe but you know what about companies that aren't working in with the federal government you know they don't have those contracts true but i mean if you can take out you know and and get 40 percent of the companies that are somehow related you know because the i guarantee jbs has some federal contracts so at the minimum they would be a cmmc level one right you know so well i think a lot of things that we do too like you take you know, I, I keep going back and thinking about that old tomorrow attack and the other attack on critical other attacks on critical infrastructure. You know, and, and Obama in 2013, you know, it, it was a fantastic executive order. You come up with the, the, the NIST CSF, which I think is a fairly good. I like the way they went about it, regardless of whether I like the actual framework itself. And then what you do is you say, hey, you know, you know, water treatment plant manager person you got to do the nist csf thing or actually you don't have to it's voluntary but here if you want to do good security yeah. take this man take this manual and, and you know and you know this is a water treatment they fix water pumps and things things that i could never do right It'd be like giving me a, a manual for a water pump and say here build a water pump i don't know how to do that it's the same right. sort of thing we give them rather than saying, hey, here's like two things. Just do these two things. You don't yeah. have to do the 200 things. Here are the two most critical things I want you to take care of right now. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, I, that's one of the things I do like about CMMC. Like level one, it, it's like 17 things. Like have an asset inventory, have patch management, you know, right. have endpoint protection. It, it's basics, man. Basics, yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. So anyway, JBS it really torques me because you would think a company of this size, 245,000 employees around the world, you would think a company of this size would have their stuff together a little bit better. It says that the backup servers were not affected and it's actively working on an incident response with an incident response firm to restore its systems as soon as possible. I would love to have seen the preparation work ahead of time in terms of what they're incident response plan looked like, what their disaster recovery plan looks like, all those things. Because I think if you were to do a thorough investigation here, or in, in, even if it's not in this one, but take the top 10 attacks and you're to do an investigation and, and, and say, well, you weren't following these best practices, I think mm -hmm. you'd find it in almost every one of them. And then what? What are you going to do about it? Yeah. Because otherwise, it's just if you're not going to enforce, if you're not going to have accountability, then just you know well, it, buckle up. It's this is just the beginning. And what's you know, if you look, there's um, you know PCI for example, right? Where credit cards are like, oh, the government's going to step in if we don't do something. We're going to do something. That I don't think you'll see that here because it's so there's not a single thread, right? Like with with PCI, yeah, it's payment cards. There's a very definitive scope. Here, it's just all over the place. I think, like I said, it's going to take government intervention and enforcement. Like, you know, we've got the requirements. Let's, let's enforce it. Yeah. It's sad because I really feel like our industry failed. Well, when you have to have the federal government step in to, to do the things that you should have been doing from the beginning. Yeah. You know, it's just irresponsibility on the part of so many people that play in our industry, so many people that work in our industry and so many people that we serve. Right. It's just like, eh, whatever. Yeah, it's, it's always more painful, too, when somebody has to tell you what to do versus you or forcing you to do something you should have been doing to begin with. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that. JBS, expect to pay more for your meat, which just not happy about it at all. Now, if you did this to my energy drinks and coffee too, Ooh. I quit. Yep, Evan retires. Oh. All right, the next one is uh, from GB Hackers. GB Hackers on security. Uh, 
Russian hacker group Nobelium attack U.S. government agencies by targeting 3,000 email accounts. Now, that may not seem like a big deal, 3,000 email accounts, but yeah. these are targeted accounts, right? These, these aren't like public, you know, just like anybody, you know, if you took like my neighbors, if you got his password, it's not that big a deal. But if you're some of these accounts, it's a big deal. Yeah. Well, and you're looking at uh, 150 organizations. So you're looking at roughly, you know, 20 uh, accounts per organization on average, right? Those That's a targeted attack. And they use constant contact, you know, so they got uh, use the constant contact account of the U.S. Agency for International Development or USAID. So they're using a legitimate account through a legitimate service. Yep. Yep. So this was, you know, Microsoft's cyber threat detection team, Mystic, which when you talk about, gosh, I'm going to, okay. I was going to we talk about, you know, problem players in our industry. Microsoft, I think is one of them, you know, it's all about money, money, money for, you know, some of the big players in our industry. And you got to wonder how much these big players in our industry actually contribute to the problems in our industry, right? We make things so damn complicated, complex enemy, worst enemy of security. We just keep piling more on. But anyway, they, uh, they claim that a large scale malicious email campaign operated by Nobelium, the same hacker group behind SolarWinds. Yep. Oh, like to Russia. Yeah, you're having some bandwidth issues here. You're breaking up. Am I again? Okay, there it's back. Uh, You're back. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm torn with you know with Microsoft because they do their threat intelligence center. They do a lot of good stuff, but at the same time, it's like, well, yeah, but you've made it so, like you said, complex. So like, ugh. <laughs> I'm torn, it, and I think you almost feel like it's almost like two different, how do you separate those out, right? There's Microsoft, the operating system and, you know, office and stuff. And then you've got their threat intelligence center, which has done a lot of really good stuff. And, but uh, yeah. Yeah, it's frustrating, man. Uh, so this is Nobelium, the same ones behind the solar winds attack linked to Russia again. Uh, large scale malicious email campaign, four tools in the infection chain, Envy Scout, Boombox, Native Zone, and Vapor Rage. Have you seen any of those in our incident responses? I haven't. Speaking I of the know. incident response, yesterday, uh, you might know about this. Um, Oscar called me yesterday afternoon about i don't know how to put it without because we're gonna to have to go the responsible responsible disclosure route mm. but it was uh essentially vulnerable firewalls mm, okay did you hear anything about that i hadn't i was okay kind of yeah. out of yesterday Tell him about it and get his story okay oh no you broke up again yeah Am I still having bandwidth issues? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. All right, you you take you take it on from here while I figure out my bandwidth issues. Yeah, it might be good to just maybe we okay. just stop the video. Stop video. Yeah, we'll stop that. How's that's, that? That's better. Yeah. Unfortunately, right. people people don't get to look at us now. Well, that's a good thing, man. <laughs> Well, I've, I've been having bandwidth issues uh, we because we're at limited, oh, yeah, no, limited it, options. Yeah, it's still breaking up a little bit. So I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and take and we'll I'll go through the last article and then wrap it up here. Yeah, and um, I'll, uh, I'll try to figure out my bandwidth issue. So the last one is the uh, U.S. Army tells remote workers to switch off their IoT devices and then takes it back. So, uh, you know, 
Our, the Army issued a new policy requiring uh, military, civilian, and contractors who are approved to telework to remove or turn off all IoT devices in their workplaces. Uh, I, I mean, yeah. It, anytime smart IoT devices are powered on, they constantly listen and collect data by recording audio transcripts or even video. Um, Am I better now? Hey, there we go. Am I better now? I just switched to another. Yep. I'm good. stealing my neighbors now. There, there you go. I mean, if there's no accountability, what the hell? No, I'm saying yeah. I didn't. Well, I mean, I, it, I, yeah, I am not. <laughs> it, I don't know. It's like, yeah, okay, ban all IoT. Well, I mean, maybe we should have some security at home, have it on a separate network. You know, I don't, I, I don't, yeah, I, it's, it's, they're like, oh, well, that's not doable. Well, yeah, it is just, it's going to be work too bad. Right. Well, and it's, so it's, it's trying to find a more creative solution too, rather than, okay, first of all, why would I not want IOT in some of these conversations? Why would I not, not want IOT around in my office, right? Well, it's because they're listening, mm -hmm. right? It's because they're traditionally not very secure and, you know, a number of other things. So it's easier to eavesdrop into a conversation. And some of these conversations are probably oh, really sensitive. Right? Wide for sure, yeah. And so if, if an attacker were to get some of these communications, it probably, I mean, it could lead to loss of life even. Right, right. And so because of, because of the fact that it's inconvenient, because, you know, my phone might be listening to me that I might have to put my phone in, in another room while I work in this room. When I, was at, when I was at Wells Fargo, we couldn't work from home unless we had a dedicated, physically secure office. Mm -hmm. it, you know, and, obviously that's kind of changed here in the last year, but at the same time, like, I, I think... Maybe the, I think maybe the, the, the issue was you can't have anything at home, right? Maybe it should have been, you cannot work in an area that has a smart device. So if you're going to work, you have to unplug your smart TV because you're in the living room or, you know, like I have a, luckily, uh, you know, I have an office. I don't have any IOT in here. Right. Well, so maybe it was that just it was it was crappy and not clear guidance mm -hmm. because I don't think you'd see like you wouldn't get nearly as much pushback if you were clear. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why, right? It's the same thing again with kids, right? It's like when my kids understand why I'm telling them to do something, I get a much better compliance than if I just order them around, right? Yeah. So if the reason is because I don't want any eavesdropping into the communications that we're having online, then like you said, just say no, well, not in within listening distance or something. Well, it actually, you know, I'm looking at it now and it does say remove all IOT devices with listening functions from the work area. Turn off personal mobile devices in your work area. So, I, I mean, it's, I don't know. It's well, then not... maybe maybe there's a misinterpretation then in the news article itself because in the news article it says, "Wow, no IoT devices?" Question mark. Presumably that goes beyond smart speakers and TVs and smartphones and would include fitness trackers, fridges, gaming consoles, and internet-enabled home security systems. I mean, it it's saying, uh, yeah, I think the with listening function. But that's the truth. Well, then it's maybe not the best reporting on this article because yeah. this article is, is is going the other way. It's like, oh, now you're telling me I can't have any IoT devices at home at all. And if that's not what the guidance said, well, then what are we complaining about? Yeah. And what's surprising, this is from Bitdefender, too. It's not like it's some unknown <laughs> you know, source. Bitdefender is pretty well known. But... When Gra and Graham Cooley wrote the article, so he knows. Yeah, you know he's yeah, pretty yeah. well cited. 
So I yeah, know. I don't know. And the guidance now, I mean, well, there's a copy in the Google cache. I'll have to go review this a little bit more. Yeah, I think his, I think, you know, reading it and looking at the Google cache, it, it's, it, the, I mean, the title of it was requirements for cybersecurity requirements for teleworkers in the vicinity of smart internet of things, applications and devices. So I think he took it from all you at edict banning, this is from Graham Cooley, edict banning all IoT devices from the homes working utterly or working remotely sounds utter, utterly unrealistic. Well, but that's not what they said. Yeah, there's definitely a disconnect here. Yeah, I, I how much, I don't know. I honestly, I don't, I don't have a problem with with that requirement just because of the like you said what what kind of information is being right yeah yeah i don't have a i don't have a problem in my own office having no iot devices with listening functions and it doesn't mean i can't have my phone either right it just means turn off siri right I mean, yeah. and yes, you could say, well, there's still the, uh, you know, it still could be listening. Well, okay. But that's what we're going for is like, what's the most significant risk here? Not the in, the nuances in the, you know. Yeah. Don't have Alexa. Don't have, I don't have the Google assistant or whatever enabled. Right. And this is, mind you, like army, right? These are like the people that fight wars for us. Mm hmm yeah, I kind of don't want them being eavesdropped on. Yeah. It, and I then, mean, you know, and I think it's a funny thing too, because, you know, you hear people complain. It's like, again, it's like I would tell my kids, they could complain about their job. It's like, well, then get another job. Yeah. Well, you know, it, and again, there's three things that the Army said. Um, and re, this is straight off of the Google cache. Remove all IoT devices with listening functions from the work area. Okay. Turn off or remove all personal mobile devices, smartphones and tablets in the work area. Okay, that I can see that being a you know, a pain but not unrealistic because Well, and these, and these are personal mobile devices, so right. a lot of times there's government issued ones for these types yep. of communications. Yep. And then disable audio access functions on personal assistant applications and devices. That's that's what they said. Here's my question. If you're complaining about that at home, were you allowed to do any of that at when you had to go in? Most likely, no. You probably, you know, you've seen it. You have to check your personal device when you get to work. You can't bring it into the, you know, highly classified area. Well, you know what? You're still doing the same work. Well, it's just funny, too, how easy we make it for the attackers. Right. You know, and then we complain about being a victim. It's like, hmm, okay. I don't know what, I don't know what you're expecting. When I, also in the government, you know, the, the uh, Army's uh, website, I thought this was an interesting, I don't know where they got their data. Because I agree, those three things seem totally reasonable to me. I, I, I would not have any issue at all. And these aren't just like... Uh, you know, these are sensitive communications, but then they go on to say, on average, a typical home may have 70 IOT devices. Uh, you know, it, I was, I saw that and I was like, what? But if you think about it, you know, how many TVs that are smart TVs that are turned well, on? It says on average. Well, yeah, I know. Well, I think that's probably high, but you know, I've yeah. got, I guess, and that would be the question is what's the, what's the definition? Right, is a Fitbit that doesn't have any sort of listening device, is that considered, you know, IoT? Well, you might have five of those, right? Or four of those. That's in 70. I'm, I'm just trying to think through it. I'm, I'm trying <laughs> to figure out how they came up with that. So let's say you have a family of four, you got four Fitbits or whatever, you've got four phones, you got four tablets. So you're at 16, you've got, He's yeah. a typo, man. 70 is a hell of a lot. I, yeah, I don't know how they can do that. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out. I would say 20. Oh, for sure. That wouldn't surprise yeah. me. 
So, I, I, yeah, I was just trying to figure out if they're how they came up with that. I don't know. Well, and, and like it's funny how you know, and going back to that logical thinking thing, you know, that we were talking about, you know, on social media, like average. Do people know what on average means? It means like if you had seven homes in the population and total of 490 IoT devices in those seven homes, on average, that would be 70. Right. I, I wonder how much people even understand what average means, or they just take it like, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, no, not 70. 70 IoT devices. I'm trying to think of if I know anybody. If, if I know anybody with 70 IoT devices. 16, so maybe you have four, five TVs, your dishwasher, washing machine, uh, you know washer and dryer clothes washer and dryer yeah your nest Alexa your room I, I don't know how they can yeah 70s a lot there's no doubt that there are i mean i think in my own house you know and this is a thing that people don't do uh, which i wish they would do is you know we say all the time you know you can't protect the things you don't know you have you know taking those inventories um, I do an inventory of my home network constantly, right? I've got active, mm -hmm. uh, but then I also do a kind of a, and I'm not weird. I mean, it takes like less than five minutes. Uh, you know, I'll do a, a reconciliation of my inventory at home, right? And I have a total of eight. Not IoT device. I mean, they're sort of IoT devices. I'm a Dish Network guy, so I got the stupid Joey's all over the place. And you know, I, well, and I have my own IoT network, and I've got three, four, because I put my Roku on that. Yeah, there's four. Yeah, and we're tech people, supposedly. Yeah. Now, again, that's not counting, you know, the kids' iPads and things like that. Right. But they're, those are all on their own networks anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you talk about viruses. Those kids are little walking viruses with their things that they do on computers. I don't know how they get infected like they do. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so that's our news articles. Just to recap real quick, we had the CMMC expect an update of some sort. I don't know what that update is going to look like. And, you know, we'll just have to wait and see, I guess. The FBI is sharing or, you know, sharing compromised passwords with uh, have I been pwned? So that was the second article. Walmart phishing attacks. Stop clicking links. Yep. If you didn't order anything from Walmart, getting a message saying that your Walmart package is delayed in shipment. Obviously, that should be a red flag for you. Yeah. If you do, if you did order something from Walmart and the package already arrived, well, then that should also well, be a red art. Yeah, I'm not, I, I'm not, we got to wrap up because I do have a, a meeting here coming up, but yeah, we could go down a rabbit hole on that for sure. All right, food giant JBS, you're going <laughs> to pay more for your meat. Russian hackers are still, you know, very, very busy in the Nobelium attack. So that comes from solar winds. And the army says, uh, no IoT devices, and then says, okay, go ahead and do it anyway. Uh, any shout outs for this week, Brad? Yeah, Rick? yeah I'm going to give a shout out to my uh, middle daughter of the seventh grader. Uh, she got nominated for a award at the middle school for, by a teacher for like a, basically like you, she did a really good job and got special acknowledgement. So it's always cool That's to awesome. see your kids do way better than you ever did. <laughs> well, and you, honestly, brother, as, as a friend, and I'm not blowing smoke. I mean, as a friend, I watch the way you raise your kids. You are an amazing father. Your wife is an amazing mother. Just seeing the kids, you know, flourish in your house is, is amazing. It blows my mind. My the ninth grader took a AP Spanish exam. <laughs> like what? <laughs> ninth grade. You know, and my the youngest is yeah. They they're so much. They luckily got my uh, my wife's study habits because I was very much wing it and wait to the last minute, and they are not like that. Thankfully. Yeah. Yeah. Good parenting though, man. That's good parenting. Usually, usually produces good results. So good for you. I'm going to give a shout out to Eric Flick. He's a guy that uh, works um, in banking 
and uh, just a, a guy who you know regularly kind of texts me and tells me, "Hey, I'm listening to you know the podcast. I'm loving this, I'm loving that. Just just a really good guy who you know has his heart in the right place and trying to make a difference in the world. So shout out to Eric Flick. Uh, all right, thanks, Brad. Good conversation. I think we could have gone better. I'm gonna. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with my bandwidth issues, but I'll have to figure that out. You know, I've had, I, when we're doing all like the video, I've had to turn the VPN off. It just yeah. causes issues. All right. If you have something to tell us or something you'd like to share with us, you can email the show at unsecurity at protonmail.com. If you're the social type, you can socialize with us on Twitter. Uh, we might troll you, but whatever. I'm at Evan Francine and Brad's at Brad Nye. Uh, and that's it. We'll talk to you again next week. Enjoy. Be safe.